What's going on folks? So yeah, today I wasn't going to I wasn't going to record today, but uh, I figured why the hell not? I'm doing a couple little small projects for a buddy of mine. We've got his 2009 Silverado. He's got a few different things wrong with it. I'll go over it with you right now. I do already have it on the lift. Um, I haven't really done too much. On here, TPMS sensors. So I've tested, there's like a certain process you can go through with these trucks. You can actually uh, put the ignition to the on position, hold down the lock and unlock button simultaneously until the horn beeps twice and it puts it into an active tire learning situation. So what it does is you go to all the wheels, you start with the front drivers and then you just deflate it. And as it's deflating, the horn will honk. And that basically tells it, you know, that's where the wheel is, it's the front driver. And then you go onto the front passenger's wheel and then so on and so forth and the horn will beep every time well I got to the passenger side it didn't honk and I basically almost deflated the tire completely and it didn't honk so that tells me that the sensor is busted so what I've done is I pulled that wheel off I checked this back wheel but what that does is because the front one didn't register and I went to the back one and it honked well now it thinks that the back one is actually on the front because it's looking for a front signal. Knowing that the front's hooped already, I'll have to relearn the whole system anyway. So I just went to all the wheels just to make sure they all honk. Only two of the four honked. So that's why I got both of these off. So that's one issue. Uh, next one, up under here, transfer case. Can't really see it all that great. Right in there, you can see it's leaking. You can see it's cracked. So right there, it's cracked and it's leaking fluid. Oh, I gotta pull that out. Paul, shut up and maybe give it a weld. Weld it back together. While we're on the transfer case, this is leaking as well. Output shaft seal, like the drive shaft, output shaft seal. Whatever you wanna call it, it's leaking. I'll replace it, super easy. In order to do that, I'll have to pull the rear drive shaft. So I'll pull the rear drive shaft out, pop that seal out, hammer the new one in. The oh, Christ. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll weld up, weld up the crack, replace the seal, and then the next project, it's getting a code for a P04 or some other or another. It's uh, to do with EVAP system. So what I have to do is actually replace the EVAP uh, vent solenoid. I googled it, obviously, I just googled it and that's told me what the problem was. It's very common with these trucks, extremely common. I've, my work trucks, they, uh, they all have the same issue. I've already replaced them at Mark Truck. So that right there. That's the vent solenoid. So what I have to do is just basically pull it out, unplug it, put the new one in, pretty much done. The solenoid opens up and it vents out the, f the emissions from the fuel tank, I believe. So that's another thing I'm gonna do. That one there, another extremely like, simple thing to do. It's just expensive parts, really. Yeah, other than that, I'll wait for a call from bro and uh, get these TPMSs, hopefully, and be on our way. So first things first, I think what I'll do is I'll drain the fluid out of the transfer case and I'll let that drip, drip, drip dry. Drip dry. One thing, keep in mind, this is a tip for anybody. If you're having issues getting the drain plug out, just stop what you're doing right there. Go right up to where you would fill it. What you wanna do is make sure that the plug that comes out to fill it can come out first before you pull the bottom one. Because if you pull the bottom one, comes out fine, you drain it. If you can't get the fill plug off and it's stripped or you totally destroy it, well guess what? Now you have no way of adding fluid back to the transfer case if you've already taken, not just the transfer case, but like anything. Then you have no way of getting fluid back into where you pulled the fluid out of. So tip number one is the only tip really, pull the fill plug first. Okay, let's get this dra uh, fluid drained out here. The night has come, it's cold and losing my Remember, fill plug first. The light is gone and lonely dark. I'm gonna put it in a clean container so that I can actually reuse it because it's new fluid. Nice clean bucket. From my isolation. Okay, now that's draining, I'm gonna get the, the rear drive shaft pulled out. This conversation. Stop this conversation. We got no relation. Okay, up next, vent solenoid. Get this thing pulled out of here. That's how easy it is to take off, just as long as you can get this stupid little clip off of there. Look at that, eh? This thing's pretty skookum. Look at this stupid hard plastic. I can destroy my arm doing this. Dislocate it. Punch myself in the face. 
So I cut the end off of it. Now this, you just put this back on. Clip, bam, done. All right, what am I gonna do with this? I'm gonna see if I can find something. Do a little quick snap and maybe I'll find it. Well, it's not perfect. Little, 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 little do. So what I've done, what bro has helped me done. <laughs> that part there has been cut off. Found a little piece of stainless tubing which managed to fit inside of the existing vent. Stainless tubing, it fits inside this. Jammed another piece of hose on top of that, clamped them both. She done. So, that's that. I'll move on to the next thing here. So I'll do the uh, TPMS sensors and the wheels. Okay, we're at the wheel here. We're gonna pop it off. So I'll just put a little mark in the tire so I know where the stem is so that when I pull it off, I know where to put it back onto without having to rebalance the wheel. Okay, well, I gotta get new sensors. These ones that I got, they're not gonna work for this vehicle because they're actually meant for Fords and don't work in a Chevy. So I'll try it tomorrow, try to see if the, the local parts dealership has some, and I'll move on to the next thing here. All right, so I'm about to start welding here. I grabbed a grinder. I just polished this up a little bit. You can see it there. I brought my welder out. Let's just, uh, let's get this thing turned on here. I ain't the best aluminum welder, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And a side note, I've disconnected the negative battery terminal on from the battery, from the truck. Wait, did I say that right? I've disconnected the negative battery terminal off of the truck. Off the battery? How do you say that? The I've di I've disconnected- <clears throat> the Negative battery terminal. I've disconnected the negative battery terminal. This welder runs on high frequency for aluminum welding, so I didn't really want to play with any electronics, and I figured it might do some back beating or something strange like that, so. Just save any hassle, undid it. Also, keep in mind, if your welds look like shit, it's not the welder, it's the welder. Excuse me. Got all these cables and stuff below my feet. It's a perfect opportunity to trip up while I'm doing a pretty important project. I don't have the steadiest of hands. Maybe it's from my disability. Or maybe it's just me. Let's give it a shot though. Yikes, that looks like trash. Too much junk in there. Holy, that looks terrible. It's so dirty, it's unreal. Yeah, so it's really dirty aluminum. Partially because it's like absolutely full of transfer case fluid and it blows chunks to try and weld with all that junk in there. I am no master by any means. But when it comes to welding stainless and sheet metal stainless, stuff's fun. A lot easier than aluminum, especially dirty aluminum. Aluminum, give me the death of me this. Well, the real test is going to be to see if it actually holds fluid. Alright. Alright. I guess it probably wouldn't hurt to put thread lock around there, eh? Or not thread lock. Thread tape. Okay, well now that I did all the welding on that thing there, I'm gonna, I think, pull the seal out of there. Let's hammer it off. Okay, 
Okay, see ya. So that's it right there. It's a seal that goes right on that. How's my weld? That's yeah, not too bad. Okay, let's get this new one on. Here it is here. I'm just gonna get this thing on here quickly. I just you just li lightly tap it on. Huh? That went pretty smoothly. Piece of exhaust pipe. It's just long enough to slip in there and beat on the end of it. And it was actually perfect size right there. It just sat right over top of the uh, right over top of the ring. Here's a perspective on the old one. This goes right on there. It sits perfectly on the, against the metal band. Just beat it on there. Oh, that's done there. Nice. Looks good. Looks good. All right. So I gotta turn that stuff off for now. I think I'll just leave that for the night because I need to get a tap. I was welding in there and now the threads are all bunged up and rather than try and force the threads through, get a tap tomorrow, get some new 2PMS sensors and then throw that all together. And then this truck should be good to go. I'll catch you guys in the uh, AM. Whoa, foggy, good morning, good morning. So we are going to carry on where we left off. Got a new tap, got a couple new TPMS sensors. I'm gonna start off with the TPMS because I think that's where it ended. So distant when you're home, always hanging by your phone. Do I even know you? And I get paranoid sometimes. I'm gonna go around and inflate all the tires again, get them all up to uh, up to their spec. Move on to the next project. I should leave them by the time it's done. Next, I'm just gonna put the wheels on right now. All right, got all the tires on there. I'm gonna jack this thing up, get this thing sky high. I got working on this, the dreaded drive line. Santa, you're fucking drunk. Sorry, let's hold each other. All right, so that's what I got to tap out. I got a new tap for it. I'm gonna grab it. There's some oil still in here, so that's kind of good for, uh, that's cutting oil. I'm gonna need to find a thing for it. And by thing, I mean a handle. <laughs> Looks like there was a little bit in the way, but not much. Give her a clean out here. Well, on these things, there's tapered plugs. There's a tapered plug up top and a tapered plug on the bottom. I don't like the idea of having a tapered plug on the bottom only because that's pretty much what caused the crack initially. Somebody probably tightened it too much and it just flared it out. The top one should be okay to have a tapered one because it's got all that structure around it. Whereas this here, it's got a low spot right back here, or I should say a skinny spot down here. It's really prone to just, you know, bust in the open. What I wanna do is I wanna find a, just like a normal drain plug. It's just, there's no tapered threads on it. It'll just go straight in. I'll just have to file this down a little bit, just make it smoother so that it actually has something to seal against. I'll give that a go. All right, so after a little bit of digging around, I found a nice little washer and a nice plug. I wonder if this will work. I'll have to look again. That one's just a bit big. Whatever, it's Okay, so I just had to put the old plug back in. I couldn't find a bolt that was uh, trash. Um, this one's tapered. I'm gonna have to give it a shot. So I'm just gonna put some fluid back in it and hope for the best. All right, so I've added the fluid back in that was already here. I'm sorry I didn't record it, but uh, it's not really entertaining anyway. I'm gonna just uh, put as much back as in I put as much back as in I, I put as much back in as I could. I'm gonna have a look and see if I got any more ATF because that's what it looks like it's coming out of here. I hope like hell that it actually holds. <laughs> All right, seems to be holding. I added, topped it up with some uh, ATF. Not a pretty weld. I have said that already, um, but it's holding. It just looks wet right now because I just sprayed it out with some brake clean. I'm gonna go ahead and put the drive shaft back in. All right, so since I put a new seal on this drive shaft, what I'm going to do is 
I'm just gonna take some Scotch Brite. Just gonna polish up where the uh, where the seal goes, just so it's a, a new uh, a new surface for it to ride on rather than the old one. Time to put this thing back in. All right, so now that the drive shaft's in, it's pretty well lit. I'm gonna clear some codes and put this thing back on the ground. Good thing I'm skinny. You probably can't see what I'm doing. All right. One code still showing EVAP. That's a permanent code, so it might be one of those ones that just disappears after a little bit. I'm going to do a quick Google research and see what the tire pressures are, because it's telling me to check the tire pressures. A quick search will tell me what it is. Okay, so that's pretty well it. Truck is pulled out. TPMS sensors, they're all reading. Tires are all fixed up. Reading pressures properly. EVAP solenoid, the vent solenoid is actually replaced. Did that. The uh, transfer case plug's holding fluid. What else did I do? Anyway, you guys saw the video. If you made it this far. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, be sure to uh, leave a comment down below, like it, uh, click on that subscribe button. Let me know how the, how I did here. Uh, the welding is kind of janky, if you ask me, but yeah, what can I say? I'm no professional. <laughs> it's holding, so that's telling me something. Next project, not sure what it is, but we'll soon find out. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.